today, I thought I'd do something a little bit different. I thought I'd tell you about one of the cars that I actually own personally myself, and the reasons why I own it, and the reasons why everyone should at some point try and own, drive, have a ride in, whatever, just to see what they're like. Now, obviously, I'm talking, if you know anything about cars, you can tell by the, what I'm driving. I am driving a Land Rover Defender. Now, this is a 90, so it's the short wheelbase one. It's a TD5, it's on a wide reg. It's only done 117,000 miles. She's an absolute honey. It's the County, so it's the one that you've got seats in the back and windows in the back, so you can, you know, you can take seven people in this car, apparently. Whether that's legal or not, I have no idea and it is very cramped and not very comfortable. But we'll get to all of those things now, we'll get to all its foibles. Now, the reason I say that you should drive one of these or have a go in one of these is because lots of people, there are lots of cynics out there that say how dreadful these cars are. And I totally understand where they're coming from. Please, before I get into it, don't have a complete hissy fit about what I'm gonna say in the comments. I'm gonna be honest, but this is, remember, my car. I love this car. I love everything about this car. I love everything that's wrong with it, and I love everything that's right with it. Not that there are many things that are right with it, but I love it, okay? So I'm allowed to say it. And make sure you subscribe to the channel and you ring the little bell. It really, really, really does help us out. So please do subscribe to the channel. Now, let's go through the things that are pretty shockingly bad about this car first, shall we? So, the steering. <laughs> <laughs> is rubbish, like rubbish. You, you basically, from lock to lock, I think it feels like it's about six turns. It isn't, but when you're going round a corner that isn't very tight, you have to give so much more steering angle than you think. And when someone gets in this that hasn't driven one before, you watch them not wind off the lock fast enough. It's very amusing to watch. The pedal positioning is just like, what were, they, what were they thinking? Like the brake's really high, the clutch is really heavy, goes down to the floor, you've got to have a massive quad muscle to be able to deal with it. It's hilarious. The throttle pedal is tiny and way over to the right. There is no way that you can possibly heel and toe in it. Not that you, well, you can, but you have to like have a monster feet and roll right off the brake pedal. But it is possible like that. You'd never really need to heel and toe one of these because Oh, you're never driving them fast enough. I do love the gearbox. The gearbox is always, in this one anyway, I'm sure there are some absolute dogs out there. In this one, it's quite positive. We're doing 30 miles an hour now, and we're already in fifth. The ratios are so short, and there's so much torque in this engine, that it, you don't need to thrash it. You can really, really poot along. No rev gauge, so you don't know how many revs you're doing. Um, but I don't imagine it revs particularly high anyway. This one has actually been fettled. This one has more horsepower. Originally it had 122 horsepower, this engine, which was upped from 111 horsepower, which was in the 300 TDI, when this TD5 engine came out of the Discovery 2 into the Defenders. This one has more like, I don't know, 160, 170, 180, I don't really know. It's been tuned at Storm Tuning. It's got their Stage 2 kit on it, so it's got an uprated intercooler, it's got straight through exhaust, and it's got an ECU remap, um, so it's got a load more power, which actually makes it way more usable on a daily basis. I have done multiple long journeys in this car. I actually picked it up from Newcastle. I flew all the way to Newcastle, having never driven a Defender before, and I went all the way up there, and I chose to, well, I bought a one-way ticket, so I was only coming back with it, and I either knew I was gonna get it back down south, where you can, seem to be able to sell a car for a little bit more money, especially something like this. And then I was gonna flog it, or I was gonna fall madly in love with it and never sell it ever. And the latter was what happened. The ride. It's, it's dreadful. It's rubbish. It, it, honestly, it is terrible. It, it wallows around corners. It, it's, you know, these springs are made for off-roading. This is an off-roading car that is allowed to go on a road, basically. That, that's how I would describe it. The new one is a road car that can go off-road. The reason I love this car and the reason that I think everyone should always go and have a go in one is because, is because of the things it's not very good at. Is because everything that it does, it makes you feel special. 
It's an adventure every time you go out in a Land Rover Defender. It genuinely is. Anything could happen. You know, I've had to tow people. I've had to do things. I, I've got a ratchet strap in the back just in case. This one has touch wood, been extremely, extremely well behaved. I bought this car because I get to drive a lot of refined, beautiful, fast sports cars and, you know, hot hatches, etc., etc. And I wanted something that was so different to those things that I could then go and get a completely different experience from when I went out and drove it on the daily basis. Now, I don't do many miles in this car. I bought it with 106,000 miles on the clock. It's done 117 over two and a half years. But I don't, I, I use it, I potter about in it. I treat it like, like a classic car effectively. So I wanted something that wasn't going to depreciate and wasn't going to take my license off me. And this seemed to be the perfect fit because Defenders are still going up in price, which is why I keep it as a bit of a queen. This one is an absolute minter compared to others at this age. The engine is spot on. It's never missed a beat in my ownership. It, it really is brilliant. The stereo is crap, like really, really bad. The tinniest thing you've ever heard. Some people put subs in the back and all that, but I don't because I keep it. I use the use it for the dogs, and they 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 actually love it in the back. It's just cool. It's just super cool. Everyone loves it. This one's a bit of a head turner with the snorkel, with the silly Dakar tires that I did not put on it. They scream on the motorway as well, by the way. And it's it's yeah. I'm not sure they're so good for the fuel consumption. I'm sure they're not good for everything. They make loads of noise and they're ridiculous. I wouldn't put them on again when I need new tires, but they do look wicked. The sawtooth wheels look fantastic and just the, the black on black on black on black with blue looks really good in my opinion. I think it looks wicked. This one, as I say, has a straight through exhaust, which unfortunately does mean that sometimes it coal rolls a little bit when you put your foot down to overtake people. Cyclists do not like it very much and I apologize to anyone that I've ever overtaken and given them a face full of black smoke. I haven't meant to do it, it just does it. But this one to me, this 2.5 litre TD5 engine, because it's a five cylinder, sounds a little bit like, and this is a, this is a bit of a stretch, so bear with me here, sounds a little bit like an RS3. Second gear. <laughs> Do you get that? Sounds like an RS3 that is being run on, well, coal or steam. This one actually cruises along fine on a motorway at 70 miles an hour. I wouldn't want to push it any harder than that because it sounds like it's going to explode, but it is absolutely fine at 70. It doesn't overheat, doesn't do anything that it shouldn't. It's just an absolute honey. The interior, the super basic interior. I love the super basic interior because as I say, no rev counter. We've got speedo, fuel, which goes down very quickly. You can watch it go down basically. Temperature and a clock. That's all you need. That's all you need. Don't need any more than that. Other things in the interior, the seats are actually really comfortable. I like these seats, they're, they're fine. You can sort of get quite comfortable. I drive it quite a lot like this. It makes it way more comfortable. Normally you'll see a Defender driver with their arm out the window. Now the reason being is if you're a slightly more portly gentleman, then you actually are very unlikely to be able to fit in this car because you need more elbow room. With this, obviously, I didn't want to have the wind blowing on the mic, so I thought I would just have that shut for this. The heater doesn't work. It does work, but it doesn't work. It's like being, as Jeremy Clarkson said once in a Lamborghini Countach, I seem to recall, he said, it's like being coughed on by a mouse through a straw. It genuinely is terrible, and it takes 10 minutes, you know, just to think about heating up. 15 miles until you can actually get some heat in the car. All of these little things that make this car as special as it is and why everyone that has one, you talk to them, they all love them, absolutely love them. And that's why there's, there's such a marketplace for them. There's such a cult following for them. It's not for driving fast. It's just one of those cars that if you get the opportunity, if you have a mate who has one, if you have someone that, I don't know, someone you know has one, just get out in it, see what you think, and genuinely just go and, they're so enjoyable, and they're such an adventure. 
to get out and go and have fun. It just make sure you get an opportunity because they're a dying breed. They genuinely are. This one's going to be going forever. When it needs rebuilding, it'll be rebuilt. She's a beaut. Absolute honey. I love this little car. Or big car. Bloody big piece of pig iron.